Hey, it's Thomas here, and today we're doing a quick review on Brightwell Aquatics Kato Grow, which you might think's just for growing Kato, but you'd be wrong. Growing Kato in a refugium is a great way to manage excess nitrate and phosphate, and a lot of reefers like myself do just that. However, there's actually a lot more going on when Kato grows than just phosphate and nitrate removal. There are a number of nutrients crucial for several important functions from chlorophyll production to protein synthesis that your Kato will be depleting. The exact same nutrients that the symbiotic algae zooxanthellae living in our corals need for long-term health. That's right, while your Kato is hauling out all that nitrate and phosphate, it's also hauling out all kinds of necessary nutrients that your corals need to grow and color up their best, which is exactly why Brightwell Aquatics made Kato grow. Almost nobody is addressing the fact that macroalgae like Kato is depleting these necessary nutrients like iron, cobalt, manganese, and others. And I, for one, am really glad to see that Brightwell Aquatics has identified the issue and also come out with a solution for it. And I'm just gonna come right out and say it. If you rely heavily on a refugium for reducing nitrate and phosphate, and your corals aren't doing their best even when lighting and flow are optimal, and routine water tests suggest they should be, there's a good chance that your corals have been starving for one or more of these nutrients for some time already, and might be the reason you haven't been finding the success with your corals that you would expect. So what exactly is in a bottle of Kato Grow? Well, thankfully, Brightwell is not shy about it. They're gonna tell you everything that's in the bottle along with its primary function, so you know exactly what you're adding to your tank and why. But first off, I'm gonna tell you what's not in it. It doesn't contain any phosphate or nitrate since, let's face it, our tanks are probably providing more of that to our corals than we actually want in the first place, which is why we have the Kato to help remove some of it. So we don't need more of that. In Kato Grow, you're gonna find potassium, boron, carbon, calcium, chlorine, iron, magnesium, manganese, molybdenum and cobalt, nickel, sulfur, and zinc. Some of these are gonna look really familiar to you, like calcium, magnesium, maybe even potassium, while others you probably haven't given any thought to before. Don't panic! If your reef looks healthy, corals are growing well and have excellent coloration, and your Kato grows well without any noticeable deficiencies, you're likely getting the majority of these nutrients through water changes or dosing trace elements. Feeding fish and corals generously on a regular basis will certainly help restore some of these nutrients as well, but cobalt, nickel, and chlorine, to name a few, are not regularly found in fish and coral foods. So if you want to be absolutely sure, the only real way to check is through ICP analysis which, you know, takes a little bit of time, costs a little bit of money, but it's a really good look into exactly what is in your water and what might be deficient. Personally, I see Kato Grow as an excellent tool to restore some of those nutrients to our water that aren't often thought about. That way, all of the critters in our aquariums that can photosynthesize are able to do so and stay happy and healthy. Refugiums are a great tool and even more nuanced than I considered when I first started using them. There's a lot more going on than just what light to use and what nutrients to add. Like, do you start them on day one or do you wait until the system's been running for a while? To answer that question and probably a bunch more you haven't even thought of yet, check out this video. Lots of answers to all kinds of refugium questions.